Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. Make videos for NBA. Um, all these videos they get posted on the subreddit right here. It's called DF Sports. I'll just have it linked down below. I make updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day, what that changes for the slate. You can ask me questions leading up to lock, after lock, all that good stuff. So this will just be linked down below. And if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter right here um, through Messenger. If you ever need anything um, with anything, never be scared to reach out. Um, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> before we get into the slate, I show you guys my results um, every single night. So we'll go over my lineups from tonight. But before we do that, if you are interested in getting, you know, private videos, core plays for me for main slate, night slate, showdown slate, all that good stuff, I'll have my Discord link down below. Um, really good nights tonight. Um, really, really solid, but, um, talk about my lineups tonight. So I played two lineups tonight. Um, it was just a 1v1 swap with both of them. Um, the 1v1 was Karis LeVert and Trey Murphy. I was going back and forth on which one I wanted. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, ended up just splitting them between both lineups. So I entered more contests. Um, you know, I originally was just in single entry, and then I was like, hmm, I don't know if I want to fade Trey Murphy. Um, I think Levert, Trey Murphy are both really, really good plays. And then I entered the main contest last minute and just played Trey Murphy over Karis Levert in this lineup. But um, my core today did great. Um, <clears throat> my core today was Keontae George. He smashed... Um, Darius Garland, core play, he smashed. Zion Williamson, core play, he smashed. Evan Mobley, core play, um, he smashed as well. So, really, really good night overall. Hopefully, you guys had a great night as well. Um, and let's just move right into the slate. So, going to be a quick video. Only a couple games on the slate. So, we'll move right along through this video. All right, so one thing I do want to note is Toronto ran a much tighter rotation tonight, um, especially in the first half. Why is it just pull up that? Come on. <clears throat> Apologies for my voice, guys. Something in my throat. Um, they ran a really, really tight rotation in the first half. Uh, main guys were on pace for huge minutes until the game blow out um, outside of Yaka Pirtle. So, with that being said, I think, you know, in a really, really good spot going up against Atlanta, I, I, I think Toronto definitely looks like one of the better teams to target on this slate. I, I quickly, finally had a really good game tonight. I think he's a decent play. He was on pace for huge, huge minutes. RJ Barrett, he's been leading this team in use to tend it down game tonight. Um, Mike keeps ownership down. Maybe everyone, everyone will hop over to quickly because the big game tonight. Scotty Barnes had a massive game tonight. Now you just have such a good spot going up against Atlanta. So I think all three of the top three guys here in Toronto look pretty solid to me. Jakob Hurdle is firmly in play at 6.2K. He lost about five minutes due to the blowout. Now, before this game, he was losing minutes to Kelly Olenek. Um, Kelly Olenek got hurt this game, but prior to that, Kyle Linick was playing about 20 minutes game. Now, I don't know if his back is 100% yet, and that's why he didn't play over 20 minutes tonight. That's something to keep in mind, though. But, you know, if we continue to get 30-plus minutes from Malcolm Pirtle at 6.2K going up against Atlanta, he is going to be solid in tournaments. It's going to be an ownership thing for me. Depending on what his ownership comes in at is probably what I'm going to do with Malcolm Pirtle here. Because um, he, he could easily play, I don't know... <clears throat> 20, 26 minutes again tomorrow, and I would not be surprised if Kelly Olenek gets a slight bump, right? Um, but, yeah, I think all four of the top guys here going up against Atlanta look like really, really solid plays to me. I think Kelly Olenek's too pricey for my liking. And then Gary Trent, uh, I think, is a decent value. Should play around 30 minutes, just up to whether he hits his shots or not. Four, super love with him, but he does have this type of ceiling. He had a big game tonight. Can he do that again? Yeah, sure. It's just up to if he hits his shots or not, but... Low four, high ceiling. I think he's a decent value at 4.3K. Um, Dick's <clears throat> minutes have been trending up. I If you need large field tournament dart, it's fine, but I'm not going to go there. All right, moving on to Atlanta. So Kongu is going to be out for this game. Capella is going to be on a minutes limit. Um, good spot here for the main guys. I think Trey at 9.4K is too cheap. You know, statute stuffer. Going to play close to 40 minutes at a close game. 
Um, going to get you a double-double. Going to lead this team in usage. It's a good spot going up against Toronto. So I, th I think Trey's a pretty good spot up. I don't mind DeJounte Murray. I just always prefer Trey, but I think DeJounte Murray is fine at 7.5K. Jalen Johnson. So I'm intrigued by Jalen Johnson here. We know he's going to play big minutes anyway, but let me talk about this for a second. So whenever they have one of a Kong or Capella out, they're going to be closing with Jalen Johnson at the 5. He should get uh, minutes at the 5 anyway, but... One thing I've noticed looking at rotations tonight is they're actually closing with DeAndre Hunter, and they're playing Jalen Johnson as the five in the closing lineup. So whenever a Kong, one of a Kongu or Capella are out, we have Capella on a minutes limit here. So um, Capella's not going to play big minutes anyway. I, I doubt he closes. I, I would expect them to go back to like Hunter, Jalen Johnson in the closing lineup here. So with that being said, I think Jalen Johnson is intriguing. I do expect him to get some five minutes here. Capella 5'9", as long as he's on a limit, just going to be strictly tournament play for me. But he could smash, but strictly tournament only. And then a guy I am intrigued by for tournaments is DeAndre Hunter. Um, you know, with games without Capella, one of Capella or Kongu, his minutes have trended up of late. He was on a limit earlier in the year when he first came back. Um, but looks like he's kind of off that. Um, and I, I would expect some more run here. Um, 4.9K, I, I don't mind that at all. I think he's a sneaky value that I don't think a lot of people are going to realize um, that he has been in the closing lineups of late. Um, so I, I don't mind that at all. Bogey's fine at 5.6K. He does have a ceiling. I would say he's more priced right. Um, and then Bay, just there for me. <clears throat> Bruno should get the backup five. He's playable, but um, priced right at 4.4K. Maybe a bit overpriced. Um, so yeah, let's move on to Cleveland. Not the best of matchups here going up against the Sixers. Donovan Mitchell, I would expect him to play tomorrow. We'll see, though. Um, if he is in, I still think there's some pretty good plays here. It's a back-to-back, -back, so we'll see if they're going to like monitor the limits. But assuming everyone plays on this back-to-back -back and Garland Mobley are still off their limits... Then I still think Garland's a pretty good play at 6.3k. Like he should be when he's off his limit, he should be like a 7k player. Um, so Garland is still too cheap. I still think he's a very solid play. Mobley at 7k, I think is decent as well. I like him quite a bit. Jared Allen's fine. I think I prefer Mobley. And then Donovan Mitchell's an okay spend up. Then I'd kind of be off a guy, be off guys like Lever, Okoro, Max Struess would still be playable, but wouldn't be my favorite value. And I don't think I get too much else. Now, looking at the rotation tonight, if for some reason Donovan Mitchell does not play. <clears throat> I swear there are no games. There we go. Looking at the rotation for tonight, if Donovan Mitchell does not play again, um, Darius Garland played huge minutes. That was expected. That they're just I don't understand why you wouldn't play big minutes tonight. Um, Jared Allen, 34 minutes. Evan Mobley, 34 minutes. Max Struess, 33 minutes. Karis Levert, 27 minutes off the bench. Isaac Okor, 30 in the starting lineup. And then George Niang uh, played 15 minutes off the bench. I don't think I'm going to touch any of these bench guys. But yeah, if Mitchell's out, it's, it's right back to Mobley. It's right back to Garland. I, I think they would both stand out as two of the better plays in the mid-range. I would really, really like both. Jared Allen would be your pivot between the two. I'd still prefer Mobley and Garland. Karis LeVert, I would really, really like at 5.3K. He shot 2 of 10 tonight to bail out the faders. Good point per minute guy coming off the bench that should play close to 30 minutes. I would like him quite a bit as a bounce back candidate. I think a Coro, as, as disgusting as it is, would be a decent value at 3.5K. I know it's disgusting. So if he's like really popular tomorrow, if Donovan Mitchell's out, you can make the argument to fade. Like, I don't know if I want to play Chalk Okoro, um, but yeah, if Mitchell's out, he is a decent value, and then Max Struess would be a solid value at 4.9k as well. So if Donovan Mitchell's out, this team definitely looks good. Like I said, I'm not going to play like Niang. I'm not going to play Sam Merrill. I'm just not going to do it. Um, <clears throat> so let's move on to the Sixers. Looks like we're going to have Melton back. I would expect him to be on some type of limit. Um, he's been out for forever, but what that's going to do, I'm not going to play Kelly Oubre. I'm not going to play Melton himself, um, against a bigger team. <clears throat> Sorry guys, my throat. You would think Paul Reed would have to play more. This guy's always in foul trouble, but going up against Cleveland, you would think he'd have to play decent minutes. So I'm intrigued here in tournaments by Paul Reed. 
uh, but strictly tournament only. Batum, he could sit. It's back to back, but he was on a limit tonight. Not going to go there. I'm not going to play Kyle Lowry. Tobias Harris is priced right. Buddy Heald's priced right. The guy I really like once again here is going to be Tyrese Maxey. Every time I'm beads out, I mean, he's just still too cheap at 9.1k. I know the matchup is not great. Probably keep his ownership down, but yeah, I do like Tyrese Maxey quite a bit for tournaments here. And then, uh, like I said, everyone outside of Maxey, it's definitely a uh, pretty unappealing uh, team for me. Good matchup here for the Clippers going up against Memphis. The guy I absolutely really like here is Zubac. Um, told you guys last night, if he was off his limit, I really liked him. Off his limit, um, it's a back-to-back. -back. Uh, I don't think he'll be on those limits, so assuming he plays in this back-to-back. -back, I don't think he sat back-to-backs. I would expect him to play here. Um, assuming he is not on the limit, I think he really stands out at 5.4k. You know, he's <clears throat> about a fantasy point per minute guy. Playing around 30 minutes, maybe a bit more. I think he lost some to the blah tonight. Um, good point per minute guy. You know, probably going to get you close to a double double. So yeah, I, th I think Zubac really stands out at 5.4k. I like him quite a bit. He'll probably be popular. Westbrook's overpriced. The main guys in a good matchup, I think, are okay plays. Keep it's a back to back here. I think everyone's been playing back to backs though. Um, but it is the Clippers, I guess, an off chance one of them pops up on the injury report, which is you know, good possibility that happens. Then we'll <clears throat> talk about it more, but, you know, at their price points, I think they're all fine plays, you know, no standouts here. Ton of blower risk as well. Pal has the ceiling off the bench, but he's priced right. I don't think I go to much else. The main standout here is Zubac to me. Moving on to Memphis, Jaron Jackson Jr. is probable. I mean, I have no idea what this team is going to do. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I really don't. Um, you know, Pippen's out. Obviously, Brandon Clark hasn't played in forever. Um, what else? What else? They have, um, um, they arrested everyone last game, so don't go off last game sample, but, um, they could do a number of things with the starting lineup. They could continue to start Goodwin. They could go back to their normal lineup, like Kennard. Um, they could do a number of things here. So I, this is going to be a wait and see approach for me. What I can say is, you know, it's not a good matchup going up against the Clippers. I mean, Jaron and Vince, they still do have ceilings. Vince, usage rate's been great of late. His potential assists have been great of late. He's very, very safe at 7K. Um, we know Jaron has a ceiling, but it depends on starting lineup what they do here. Like I said, they could start Goodwin. They could keep that Kennard and Conchar lineup. They could do a number of things. So it's really, really tough for me to say right now what I want to do with Memphis until I see what they do with the starting lineup. Um, Gigi Jackson, he's been incredible, but yeah, we'll do it. Aldama's minutes have been trending down. Uh, this game, like I said, everyone was out. Um, so we'll take a wait and see approach here. The only guys that I trust without seeing a lineup right now are Jaron Jackson Jr. and Vince Williams. So um, yeah, we'll see. Moving on to Washington, not a good matchup here, but um, I do want to note they ran a pretty tighter rotation tonight. You saw huge minutes for Tyus Jones and Kyle Kuzma. Jordan Poole came off the bench. Cool Bale was in the starting lineup. He played huge minutes, just had a floor outcome. Um, assuming he starts again, I do think he's a really, really solid value. He'll play in a blowout as well, so you don't have to worry about that. So I am pretty high on Cool Bale for value. I know I had a really, really bad game tonight. Bagley's minutes weren't great. They went to more, you know, guys off the bench like Kispert. Um, etc. Kuzma played a ton. So uh, Bagley, more tournament only play. Kind of like Paul Reed, but if you get the minutes, like he could absolutely smash. So, like some interest in Bagley. What else? What else? And if you think this game stays competitive, the guys you want to look to here are Kyle Kuzma and Tyus Jones at 6.1k and 7.4k respectively. Kuzma had a huge, huge game tonight. So um, I like the main guys here. Kuzma and Tyus for tournaments. I'm not going to play pool. Um, even though I think he had an okay game coming off the bench. Still played 30 minutes. It's fine but yeah really like cool Bali assuming he starts again moving on to OKC I know SGA is almost 11k but I think it's warranted I think he's finally priced where he should be now you have a nut matchup going up against Washington so I still like SGA even at this price point their go-to guy right he's gonna stuff the stat sheet his potentials are way up as late of late as well so I still think SGA is a good spend up even at that price point I really like Chet at 7.6k as well. He should be able to feast on this front court. So, like the top two guys here. Jalen Williams, I think, is decent at 7.2k. He's playing huge minutes. His usage rate has been way, way up of late. So, top three guys here for OKC definitely look pretty good. Giddy's minutes haven't been great. Back-to-back, um, -back, so we could see Hayward sit. Um, even if he plays, it doesn't really impact too much. Like, Dort's still a fine value. And then, um, I think that's it. Like, yeah, I think Dort's solid too fine. He'll be low-owned, kind of like Gary Trent, just up 
if he hits his shots or not. Good defender, though. You can get, like, steals, stuff like that. But really like the top three here for the Thunder. Moving on to Miami. This is another team that, if Harrow is out, I, I just don't know. what They, they could do a number of things. They they, uh, they did sign DeLon Wright. Uh, so that's something we'll have to monitor. I guess I'm going to just go over it with Harrow in. So if Harrow's in, um, Butler is also back. I, I think the main three are firmly, firmly in play for GPPs. I don't have a, I guess Butler would be my favorite. But no standouts here. Like Caleb Martin's fine. Like Duncan's fine. I don't mind them. Um, but it's really going to come down to Tyler Harrow. And like I said, uh, they could do a number of things with the starting lineup. Like Jamie could play some point. Um, well, like, like I said, they, they signed DeLon Wright. So it's kind of tough for me to say right now. Um, so it's going to be kind of like Memphis, another wait and see approach for me. So, um, yeah, definitely some value could open up here for, uh, Miami. Moving on to the Pelicans. We'll see about Ingram. I would assume he plays. I'm, I'm entirely sure they kind of keep it easy with illnesses, illnesses though. So maybe he does sit here, but if Ingram's in, not in a good spot, I think Zion does look pretty good once again, even at 7.9k. His minutes are just way, 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 way up of late. When he's playing high 30s minutes, he should be like an 8.3 to 8.5k player, so I still think you're getting him at a discount here. So I don't mind Zion. Everyone else, I think, you know, Ingram's fine. CJ's priced right. Um, how many minutes did, I, I want to say, uh, Jonas smash tonight. How many minutes did he end with? 27 minutes, um, Nance 12, I don't know if that was due to foul trouble or not, um, but strictly tournament only, I think now Nance is an okay value, Herb Jones, safe play, Trey Murphy's priced right, um, so outside of Zion, don't love much here, but, um, if Ingram's out, you know what to do, then, you know, we're going back to Zion, he would look great, CD would look really good, um, maybe Jonas plays 27 minutes again, Trey Murphy would be a really good play at 5k, Herb Jones would be a solid value, um, Alvarado crushed in garbage time, um, but yeah, um, these guys would look good once again. I believe Najee had a good game, um, but yeah, definitely be some plays there. Moving on to Phoenix. So Beal is doubtful for tomorrow, so you're going to get Grayson Allen, Eric Gordon in the starting lineup. I think there's definitely some value. I think Aaron, er, Eric Gordon looks like a decent value. Royce O'Neal, I mean, he's been crushing of late. I don't mind him. I think he'll be popular tomorrow with Beal out. So I like Royce O'Neal. I like Eric Gordon. Grayson Allen's playable. Yusuf Nurkic at 6.5K has been, it's been trending down of late. And I think Booker, KD are solid spend-ups. Prefer Booker to KD. I don't think I get too much else here, though. Moving on to Houston. So, um, I want to take a look at their first half rotation tonight. It was different. Um, they played a lot in the first half. Um, so let's take a look at that. As you can see, they were in a really, really tight rotation until the blowout here in the first half. Um, so guys that play big minutes, I mean, Fred played a lot more than I thought he was going to, um, Jabari played big minutes. I mean, Thompson played decent minutes. Jalen Green played big minutes. Um, Dylan Brooks played a decent amount. So not a good, or, I mean, decent spot going up against Phoenix. Um, Amen's still too pricey. Jabari Smith, we know he has a ceiling at 6k. I don't mind him. You know, usage has been a little bit weird of late. Jalen Green at 7-1 still priced right. I do like Fred Van Fleet though at 6.7k. <clears throat> Now, also a back to back, we'll see, I guess. But uh, yeah, I do like Fred at 6.7K, assuming his minutes are, you know, similar. And then Senkin is fine at 8.5K. I don't know if I get too much else here, but I think that's going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys had a great night, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.